former school principal Rita Ellis Rose, love for the public service is beyond question, and so too is her love for her country. Jamaica, 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 like 42 years after Ellis Rowe retired as principal of Burma de Primary School on the outskirts of Linstead in St. Catherine, her past students gathered to honor her. She was so transformational in what she did with us at that school. She saw the potential of her students and she ensured that we met our full potential at the primary level at the time. So she was, she was so involved with us. She showed us what was greater, what was better. She showed us something that was outside of our small little community and district. So she made us think bigger. She made us aspire. She was there to motivate us. She was very stern and she was very structured, but she had a fixity of purpose and she wanted to ensure that we did exceedingly well, which we did. When I see my past students and how they have blossomed out, it makes me feel that I have maybe done something good somewhere along. The, the banquet, at which 80-year-old Ellis Rowe was honored, coincided with the 90th anniversary of Burma de Primary School. Ellis Rowe's stint as principal at the institution commenced in 1978 and ended 1981. That's just three years, a relatively short period of time filled with fond memories and hard work. I worked hard. I did my best. I loved my students and I did what I could do for them and if they have taken their places in life then that makes me feel good. Ellis Rowe is originally from the community of Colonel's Ridge located near Kellitz in Clarendon. Her father Canute Holness, who was a farmer, died in 1984 and her late mom Luna Price Holness, better known as Miss Birdie, was a housewife and seamstress. Ellis Rowe is the last surviving child for her parents considering the death of her two brothers and sister. She told the Beacon that she was a child when she started dreaming of becoming a teacher. Ellis Rowe attended Mount Carmel Primary School and later Brandon Hill Primary, where the principal at the time was the late Edward Dinnell. We had teachers who um, went beyond their call of duty to help us. I can, you know, remember Mr. E. L. Dinnell, who took quite a number of students from the neighboring schools. And um, he really worked with us, and we owe him a debt of gratitude, he and his wife. Because of him, um, you know, people like me, you know, Glenn, we could go to teacher's college and, um, and move on from there. After completing primary school, Ellis Rowe got a job for a few months as a pre-trained teacher at Frank Field Primary School in Clarendon. She later attended Shortwood Teachers College in Kingston from 1963 to 1966, thanks to the support she received from her former principal Edward Dinnell and his wife Mavis. She also attained an associate degree in counseling from Northern Caribbean University. After completing Shortwood Teachers College, Ellis Rowe taught at various educational institutions, Porus Infant School in Manchester, Shortwood Practicing Infant School in Kingston, St. Cyprian Prep School in Highgate St. Mary, Kellitz High School in Clarendon, and her alma mater Mount Carey Primary, also in Clarendon. Ellis Rowe told the Beacon that it was during her stint at Mount Carmel Primary that she was inspired to pursue school leadership. Mount Carmel was where we went, and Glenmore Miller was the principal there. And um, we had a very elderly teacher and we always she always talked to me and encouraged me at that time that I could um, manage my own school you know having seen how I acted there and so I decided to apply and um, maybe I applied for one or two weren't successful as a first principal though she was not successful initially in her quest to become a principal Ellis Rowe did not give up on that dream. It finally came true when she applied for the post at Burma de Primary School in 1978 and was interviewed by the school's board chairman at the time, Donald Taff. Ellis Rowe recalled that she first heard about Burma de Primary School through another teacher from her community, Ruby Bramwell, 
who at the time was employed to McGraw High School, located close to Bermody. There were hundreds of students enrolled there, among them Carleen Lewis Malcolm, who to this day still sings Alice Rose praise. I have fond memories of Mrs. Alice. Mrs. Ellis came to school when I was in grade two and I was immediately transferred to grade three and she saw to a number of my attributes. She realized I was an introvert and she tried her best to pull things out of me and for that I'm grateful. Ellis Rowe recalled that at the time she went to Burmody Primary, she was informed that the school over a protracted period of time, was not reaping success in the national primary school exam known then as common entrance. When they told me that there were no passes for so many years, you know, that propelled me to work hard with them and to get the best teachers and for teachers to, to um, sacrifice their times for them. And one of them reminded me that in my first year I had five or seven passes. I don't remember, I can't believe, but thank God. And so t um, students moved on to um, secondary school and high schools. And um, the school continued to grow. A show of humility, Ellis Roy is quick to note that she does not take all the credit for the achievements secured under her leadership at Bermuda Primary. She expressed gratitude for the contribution made by other teachers, board members, and residents of the community. We work as a team as a team at school in the community because you cannot separate the school from the community. She added that, looking back, she has no regret that her journey took her to Bermody. There are happy memories, there are good memories, and I don't regret any my going there and my first experience as principal. After leaving Bermody Primary School, Ellis Rose's sojourn as a teacher came to an end. Though she was no longer in the classroom, she remained in the public service. Edith Rowe explained that her journey outside the classroom began with the then Ministry of Public Utilities and Transport. I did a, a short stint at the Ministry of Public Utilities at the time, and then I left and I worked as the administrator at Bustamante Hospital for Children, and then I after maybe about seven years, after a few years, well, at, the, at, at Bustamante, they asked me to do the Kingston Region Hospital, which was Bustamante, KPH, Jubilee, um, Mona, and I think there was a clinic someplace in, in West Kingston. For me, that workload was very heavy, and I decided to, um, and it was, yes, I have my memories there, <laughs> but I enjoyed being at Bustamante Hospital, and um, after that, I went to town, the town planning. Alice Rowe told the Beacon that it was a bittersweet feeling transitioning from the classroom. The transition wasn't difficult in terms of administration, but in terms of leaving the classroom, you know, emotionally, it was difficult. But in those days, salaries were very low, and you tend to want to move on and, you know, get a better salary. She added that, although salaries were relatively low when she was in the classroom, she did not allow that to affect her approach to teaching. She did it from the heart. I didn't think about money too much. Um, I, I don't know. I just wanted to help children. I just wanted them to move on. I wanted them to be something, to have a career. Lots of teachers go into the classroom now for gain, you know, what they can get. But in those days, it's not what they could get. It's what they could give. And if I gave, I give God thanks for that. Love for children. Ellis Rowe noted, helped to keep her grounded while she was a teacher, and it should be a hallmark for others in the profession. I would say, do not go into it for the game. Things are different, and people, yes, will have to live, but if you know you don't have a love for children, 
a love for teaching, do not go into it because you are not going to do well. You must love children, you must love people, and you must um, you must accept the remuneration, whatever it is, before you go into it. Don't go into it just for money. Alice Rowe, who has spent time in the United States, now lives in St. Andrew with her 94-year-old husband, Royston Rowe. She is involved in philanthropy, and she became a Christian in her latter years. That is one of the hallmarks of my life because, you know, you, regardless of what we are doing, if we don't have Jesus in the mix, you know, it can fail. So I have no regret being a Christian. I attend the Church of God of Prophecy at, at present at 47G. Old Hope Road, and we started that church in in Spalling's Lane within um, the Swallowfield community. And I worked in that community, especially with the seniors. I usually team up with Food for the Poor, and I would drive many years to go there and get food and other supplies for the for the elderly, not only for the, those in the church, but those in the community. And that is, you know, a part of my life that I enjoyed. We had a team that would go sometimes and um, visit sick. I remember, you know, bathing sick people, tying up their wounds, so to speak, and... Uh, Getting things for them like bed, mattresses, those give you a sense of fulfillment. You know, when you know you have helped a sick person and, and a family, you know, when you know you have fed the poor, you know, it gives you that sense of fulfillment. And I enjoyed that for many years, many years. And this is the reason when I went to the States, I couldn't live there, I couldn't stay. I always wanted to come back home and I continued to work. Alice Rowe hopes to be remembered for the lives that she touched, including those with whom she came in contact when she was a teacher. I hope that they would remember that I, you know, set an example, set a precedent, and that their life has been better because. I passed through, and that I serve a God who never let down his people. He gave me the strength and the grace and the wherewithal to do what I have done. On the behalf of videographer Dean Alcott, I'm Horace Mills reporting for the Jamaica Beacon. This report was brought to you by Bermuda Primary School Past Students Association.